Welcome to today's Next Steps program, and thank you all very much for being here. Um, I'd like to just briefly mention our upcoming programs. We uh, The spring meeting is still being scheduled. It's either going to be in May or June, but they're waiting for one person to RSVP, and that will determine the date. So there have there will be an announce, announcement about that soon. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we we don't have any next step programs scheduled for May in case the spring meeting is in May. Uh, but we do have one scheduled for June 29th, and that is going to be on AI and Chat GPT, featuring uh, David Gustafson and Jonathan Young, who are both at the UH Manoa Library. So stay tuned for an announcement about that. And I just also want to make a plug for um, sharing your ideas about programs for next steps. If you have an idea for a program or if you yourself want to be a presenter, please let one of us three members of the Next Steps Committee know, and we would be happy to talk to you about doing a program for Next Steps. And thanks to all the Hawaii Library Association members for supporting the Next Steps series. Um, your uh, membership supports the Zoom platform that we use for these presentations, as well as the Canva subscription that we use to create our uh, event announcements. So thank you for your HLA membership. And now I would like to introduce our speaker today. Um, Kristen Tarnas is the K-8 through librarian at Hawaii Preparatory Academy, and she's going to talk about the Anui Nui Hawaii Keiki Book Award. And I, I happen to have been, uh, Kristen was one of my students when I was teaching LIS 610 back in 2020, and I think that was when this idea uh, was first starting to germinate. So I think it's really exciting to see what this uh, students and others have come up with, and I'm excited to hear Kristen's presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Kristen take it away. Thank you, Kristen. All right, thank you. And welcome everybody at this lunchtime. Thank you for giving up this precious time. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and I might pop in and out of the presentation and um, just let me know if it loads because Gwen, I wasn't seeing your screen there. So um, just just make sure, do you, Gwen, do you see that screen? my screen. Yes, I can see your slides. Okay, awesome. Awesome. I'm sorry. It, okay, close your eyes for a second. Okay, flashback. Okay, here we go. So um, thank you so much for coming. And yes, actually, um, I'm pretty excited to have the people who are on this meeting right now are um, somehow this feels like a culminating event, even though I'm actually not in grad school anymore. So I'm here to share about an award that was created by some colleagues and I, and it, we, in the end, named it the Anui Nui Hawaii Keiki Book Award. Um, I am one of the members of this, com this community and hui and committee. I, I always avoid committee. I feel like people run the other way when I say committee, so I'm trying to go with hui. Um, that includes Sarah Alito, who's right there with that beautiful hibiscus behind her, um, Sherry, Taryn, Lauren. And we now have Jean, who is joining us um, because we are now officially sponsored by HLA. So that's very exciting. We also have um, advisory members, Stephanie and Kali. So, um, uh, and you'll hear a little bit about Stephanie coming up here. Um, so here's what I was, um, just based on questions that people have had about the award, this is what um, this is what I thought would be helpful for you to know. Basically what's up, what is this award about um, and why was it created? And you know, how can you get involved in being the change? Um, just to start, we'll start with right now, where we are right now. And um, that is that we have created an award. And in this award, we've designed it so that librarians nominate the books. And then librarians, teachers, and families can share nominated books with Keiki. And then the Keiki do the voting. And advocacy happens. Ta -da! But anyway, we'll get a little bit, we'll get a little bit uh, underneath what all that means here. So the history of this award, and sorry for all the text, but every single word is important. Um, first, 
in Dr. St. Clair's LIS 610 Foundations of the Information Professions, Stephanie Robertson and I um, had partnered up and we, we were um, taking a look at the issue of diversity in young children's literature. And we just found that there was a need for more of a representation of the children in Hawaii. And, um, but one of the issues was there just wasn't much out there. Um, there. There are children's books. And in fact, our committee actually chose a certain age group based on what we had the most to choose from in the end, but that's kind of where it started. And then fast forward into Dr. Wertheimer's class, LS650, Management of Libraries and Information Centers. And there was a group of us, Amanda, Sarah, Sherry, and I, and we were trying to address the issue of children being able to see themselves, um, children in Hawaii being able to see themselves in literature. And so we thought, well, how do people do that? Um, how do they actually get material to happen so that there are books available and how do they get um, this in front of people and get advocacy to, ha advocacy to happen. And what we noticed in our research was that most of the time it's an award. I'm actually not personally really big on, you know, I'm like Alfie Cohen guru, you know, rewards, punishments, and, um, that sort of thing. So awards, I actually don't always love, but it seems to be the way to do it when it comes to books. And so we thought, well, maybe we could do this. It was COVID. So we, we um, contacted some groups, but during COVID, everybody was kind of trying to redesign everything they did. And so we weren't really able to partner up with a group. And so we thought, well, we'll just do our own. So we created our own award and we ran it as a beta cycle. And we actually had two schools um, that joined us. And then after we graduated, or most of us graduated, um, we decided we would still continue it. And so we just had our first official award cycle. Um, and it is it was run by four schools and students in K-3 voted. And then the part that I'm just super excited about is that um, HLA stepped up and said, well, you know, what do you need to keep this going? And um, they agreed to be our um, supporters and even our fiscal sponsors. So that was really exciting. Um, a lot of people ask, well, what's with the name? Why Why the Nui Nui Waikiki Book Award? And there's the obvious, which is that a Nui Nui the rainbow is kind of a common um, symbol for diversity. And there, that we felt that the children in Hawaii have just some really unique elements of diversity that could be represented um, in their literature. And the other one is that the rainbow also represents Manoa Valley and University of Hawaii at Manoa, which was the award's conceptual birthplace. Um, here's where it started. So this was Stephanie Robertson and I um, with Dr. Sinclair, and we did, um, we did our project on an imperfect Marin, uh, imperfect Marin to few windows. So looking at the work of Rudin Sims Bishop um, around um, mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. And this is one of the quotes um, from one of from our paper that I thought would be a powerful one to share. And it is that um, the problem is that the literature available in which Hawaiian children and children of Hawaii see themselves is limited. And that became a really big issue um, that that we dealt with. It wasn't just about bringing awareness to literature. is is that we actually need to find ways to encourage the creation of literature. Um, and you know, it's not just get the right scholastic flyer. So, uh, and and it's a unique environment for for getting literature created. We then went on to Dr. Wertheimer's class, and we. We're putting together a beta test of an award such as this. Our our um, our focus um, was first and foremost children of Hawaii being able to see themselves and each other in books. Um, but we also wanted to support book creators in Hawaii, and this becomes a little bit of an interesting one that we're actually still thinking a lot about. What does that mean to advocate for Hawaii book creators, and um, and 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 why? Um, and so we really wanted to support Hawaii writers and illustrators and publishers. And the other one is to 
kind of acknowledge the essential role of children's librarians as literacy leaders and thus the aspect of librarians being the nominators. We, when we ran our beta test cycle, we were working with two schools. We had 126 students who voted and Uncle's Magic Thrownet was their winner. And what do you know, we ran our recent first formal award cycle. We had a big increase in numbers with 413 Kiki vote. And yet again, Uncle's Magic Thrownet was the winner. So clearly, clearly children were resonating towards that, towards that book. Um, and definitely, you know, jump in if you have a question since I'm not looking at you folks right now, but feel free to jump in at any point. Um, so I think we're all really familiar with the um, We Need Diverse Books um, program and just the concept of books as windows and mirrors and sliding glass doors. Imagine a world in which all children can see themselves in the pages of a book. Um, is I think that's a, it's kind of a continual mantra that we're aware of. Um, and I, I think one of the interesting things about um, issues like this as they become popular in a field or awareness is increased in a field, you know, sort of like recycling or something is that is that I think there's also a little bit of a numbness that comes with, oh, everybody's aware of this, therefore it's taken care of or it's still happening. Um, and so I was, reading up on Ellen O, the co-founder of We Need Diverse Books, and she had said in one of her interviews that diversity is not a new issue at all. And there's been a lot of activists who have really tried to promote diversity movements over the years. And it's just, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's not, it's not done. It's continually needing our attention. Um, and she just talked about the power of representation um, and in this quote, she had just said, when you're little, you don't know what you've been missing if you've never seen it before. I didn't know that hole in my heart that had been filled with self-loathing and a wish that I could have been born white had formed because of a lack of representation. And I think that 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 part about when you're little and you're not knowing, and I, I think it's powerful that we're starting with um, with younger readers and young literacy, because I think at that age, it is an unknown. You just assume that the reality that you're experiencing is just simply the reality. There's not, there's not even um, almost a way to defend yourself against it. Um, although I think now that I'm a K-8 librarian, I'm, I'm really, really wishing that we had more um, literature in the middle grades um, for adolescents, young adolescents to see themselves in literature. So um, this, this right, the woman in the middle is Ellen O. And she, start, she started, she was a co-founder for um, We Need Diverse Books, but also this anthology, Flying Lessons and Other, Other Stories. And she put together a lot of diverse authors. One of them, we're so excited. We actually got to have Meg Medina come to our school last week, which was pretty exciting. It was my first time as a librarian facilitating a um, an author visit. So that was really exciting. And the picture you see um, up in the corner of her um, kind of ooing and aahing at a book, is that is actually Uncle's Magic Throne Net that um, I had all the students in K-5 and some of our middle school school students sign so we could give an award-winning book to an award-winning author Meg Benitez an incredible Latina author she does books all the way from picture books to um, young adult novels and she was just named as the um, national ambassador for young people's literature so that was pretty exciting that happened in February and then we have um Acevedo, who is our Young People's Poet Laureate for 2022. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can be successful at this. Gwen, just shout out if it doesn't work. I'm gonna do it right here. And I think Working. if I start right here. A long story. <laughs> I technically began writing it in 2012 when I was an eighth grade English teacher in Maryland. Remember, these are black and brown girls in America. And I had students who would ask me, 
you know, we never see any stories with us in them. My students were 90% Latino. And I realized that all these stories I had been telling in class and these poems I had been writing didn't necessarily end up on their bookshelves. There is hurt here, inheritance. So I, you know, this is a, a common refrain we're hearing from anybody who, who is not, not clearly Caucasian and then all kinds of other aspects of diversity. Um, and, you know, we, we hear it all over the place. So um, we feel like this award is something that is going to help bring awareness to books that are written about and for Hawaii Keiki. Um, and the about is a really important aspect of this award. We have a website and um, I know the link has been put in the chat. Um, you can, you're also welcome to use this QR code and there's lots of information on the website and we can look at that in a minute and uh, we'll keep putting it, put it in the chat as well. Um, but it has information on what the award is and how, to, how you could run it in your library or your school. And, um, and we're looking for, for more ideas. We do put um, teachers and librarians who have done it are generating, um, generating media to help with running that program. And so the next part is that you could get involved. We'd love for you to get involved and you could support the Anui Anui Hawaii Kiki Book Award program by, and this is actually our next step. This is kind of, the, the if, you, if you want it, nice, easy way to get involved by nominating books, um, then by sharing nominated books with Kiki. And then if you're in a library or a school or with your own children, um, doing some programming with those Kiki to support their vote and also by um, checking in about joining us in our Hui to help grow the award. Um, there on our website, there is a form for book nominations and that's what it looks like. And sorry, it's gonna go to it again. Like in the right spot. Um, our criteria has been growing and actually we're probably gonna be adjusting our criteria more as we get more feedback. Um, and sorry, I was just looking at the chat quickly in case I had a question to address. And this is on the website. It's actually also on the nomination form. Um, so one of the criteria that has been the biggest challenge for us to make some kind of um, ideological decisions about is this one about the book creators. So originally we were being very purist and wanting um, the, the author, the illustrator and the publisher to be from Hawaii and in Hawaii and or in Hawaii. And um, after talking to our award winner actually and the publishers and getting input from others, we're, we're shifting it. So we've kind of changed it to an author from or in Hawaii whose work reflects a strong connection to the experiences of Hawaii's keiki. And then that last part of that um, criteria is the part we're focusing on. And then all nomination votes being equal priority goes to books published by a Hawaii book publisher. Because there are a lot of a lot of books that we wanted to nominate, but they were not published um, by a Hawaii publisher. And we do on the website have resources to run the program um, and we hope to have more. And we have a meeting coming up on Tuesday, April 25th on Zoom. You're welcome to check in with me if you'd like to join it. I have these these uh, stricken through parts because this is some of the work that we're doing as a committee at because we're work work we're award cakeys ourselves is kind of defining who we are and and how you know how we do the thing that we want most which is for Hawaii's cakey to really be able to see themselves in literature um so even looking at how might we adjust our mission um as we're getting feedback from people um, there are some resources on here and I will share this presentation so you can take a look at it. And thank you very much. I have a link to it and a QR code to the presentation, but I'll also put the link in the chat. And I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute so that if you have any questions, we can go into them. You can hear all of the uh, 
active librarian users in the background. Yeah, thank you so much, Kristen. That was an excellent overview of your uh, the work that you and the uh, Hui have done to create this award and uh, the issues involved. So mahalo for yeah, uh, coming here and presenting to us today. I think um, there was one question in the chat that Jessica asked about the graphic uh, and who designed it. Which which uh, the logo? I think that, yeah, I think she means Jessica? the logo. Okay. Well, so far that was me. I did put it out to Karen Lobel Freed asking if she would design our logo. <laughs> she's really busy right now because she's making a new book that will be in the age range of our award. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, but yeah, for right now, that's 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 me with input from the from the buoy. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Excellent. Excellent. And I was actually, I mean, think of questions for sure, because there there is a lot to dig into here. And I often um, have a lot of questions myself, actually. Um, but one of the things I'd love to have folks do is to actually, because, you know, just the act of nominating a book is an interesting experience. Like going and trying to find books that fit this criteria is, is kind of a, it's kind of an interesting activity or an educational activity in and of itself. <laughs> I've had I've had people nominate books and I have to be, you know, that's something our Hui has to really look at is making sure they fit the criteria. But I, I think it's interesting just to try to find a book that fits any criteria is fascinating. But it's also thinking about our our literature here in Hawaii for children. For instance, a lot of the um, young people's literature in Hawaii uh, is connected to mythology. And, and those are great books, but they're not books in which children really can see themselves. And, and that's what we're looking for. Um, the, the media that's on the website right now is all the books from our last round, um, because we're now kind of at this point where we need to and we need to get new books nominated and up and ready. Great. Um, I, I just want to mention again that uh, the link to Kristen's slides is in the chat at the very top. And there's also a link to the Anoe Noe Award website uh, that's up near the top of the chat. So please uh, click on those and take a look at those. And Andrew has his hand up. Great. Well, first of all, just I love that love the presentation, and I'm so so. I'll, I think all of us are so proud to see that you know something that began as as a class project is is carrying through and is really making a difference. And I remember ever since I came here that one of you know everyone was happy about the Nene Award, but I think it really is important you know to to highlight local works. And um, so for all the reasons that you're doing, so you know kudos. But um, and you know big big round of applause and those things but um uh -huh. I, I did want to kind of think about like in terms of next steps and I was just thinking about you know how like you know I know Caldecott and Newberry are certainly another uh level you know in terms of you know the infrastructure that they have and you know and, and the, the money and you know it's, it's amazing like if you're at ALA you'll see news crews coming out you know trying to go and cover at the conference, you know, which were the winners. And, but anyway, I was just trying to think of, you know, if, if money was no issue, um, you know, how could you try to recognize the award winners? So I know like, for example, like ALA does stickers, you know, that booksellers can put on books or um, posters and like the Hawaii Book Publishers Association used to have an award ceremony. Um, and, you know, there is an opportunity, you know, with the Hawaii Book and Music Festival um, coming back, up again, you know, as a as a, as an in person event, you know, I'm just trying to think about you know different ways that you might want to in, engage, or are there you know if you had a donor who was able to help with something, um, you know, and similarly, I wonder like, um, you know, there are a lot of like the um, annual book annuals that will come out and list all of the award recipients. You know, I wonder you know how can we make sure that this is included as a way of recognizing and as these, these become more prestigious, you may get more entries and, you know, maybe even more resources to move this thing forward. But um, just, just yeah. continue to dream for when, when things 
but but and also so excited so anyway I'll be fine. right well first thank you i mean you made space you both made space for this kind of work to germinate in your classes and i appreciate and we appreciate that and um I, it's interesting when you say if money is no object, and I am super grateful because HLA has uh, agreed to be our fiscal sponsor because, you know, becoming a fiscal entity is a little bit um, beyond, well, not beyond Alita, she could probably do it, but um, it is a whole nother step. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And we have been looking into, you know, all those, all those little details. I, I honestly feel like it's it's not even so much if I had all the money in the world or if money was no issue. I almost feel like it's more if human resources were no issue. I, it's it's more that it's because there's always like some great suggestions that, and I've gotten quotes on stickers with dang stickers are expensive. I was like, all right, I am not slamming our whole budget into stickers. We're just going to have to do without stickers for a year or so, <laughs> unless I make them. Um, but I did, I did, I have to go pick them up. Um, I did get plaques for the award winners. Um, and, and, you know, my husband's a beekeeper, so honey will always be involved, I suppose. Um, so, but for me, I think the bigger issue is the human resources, all the people involved in the hui from the beginning you know, I've been putting a lot of energy out for a long time. And, you know, I know like Taryn's going to be leaving after this cycle because she's now in the YA um, library area. So she wants to focus there. And, and then people do things like, you know, have lives and babies and jobs and, you know, all kinds of things that happen. So I think, um, I think all of the next steps, what it really takes is, is kind of the, those human resources to move forward. I found that people are also, super generous i mean we've had people who have you know bought books for schools who need books as i can think of lots of ways to spend money too so i'm not slamming the money part um <laughs> that's a good one and i and all those ideas i love that idea of how can we get on some lists and and honestly i think that we could really be a model um, award program for diversity because that the way that Hawaii has diversity, I mean, I might be being a little Hawaii centric, but I feel like is is so unique and such an opportunity for other other places to learn from. Um, I do feel like we're a little numb to diversity and literature issue. Um, but I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I yeah, have such a great idea. And there's been times when I'm like, let's bow out, we're done here. And feel like, no, no, it's good. You got to keep it going. You know, but there's, there's the, it, it needs that, that capacity to help it happen. So, so what I've come to figure out is that I'm going to keep it, we're going to keep it going at the level we can keep it going. Um, and then as it gains speed, like you said, I think that we will have more human and financial resources. I have a feeling they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna come in and we're gonna grow when that happens. But yeah, any opportunities that you see, you're like, hey, and especially if they're like easy. <laughs> hey, Kristen, during your next non-lunch hour, um, go ahead and check this out. Um, I love it. Um, right now, nominating books is the easiest. Um, so do that. Thank you. Um, sorry, somebody made me a poem. That's just super sweet. Um, so that's kind of what I think for our next steps is we've got the plaque. I feel super official now. And we've got a fiscal sponsor. So this year has been like amazing on that level. I'm so grateful to HLA for basically just get having a meeting with us and saying this you should do this. This is good. And you you have something that's worth moving forward with. And I think we all needed to hear that. Alita, do you have anything you want to chime in on that question? Because you have a good brain I think for that in terms one. of like having all the money in the world, it's um, what Kristen said, like trying to manage it from like where it's at. So contextually, like, you know, we're still in the fledgling phases and there are a lot of great ideas and trying to figure out, okay, where do we focus that those <laughs> the limited people power, the human resource part of it. Um, but nominating books, I think also like um, having some sort of PR budget to get it out to all of the um, school libraries that would use, um, could run this program. Um, I mean, 
there's there's a lot of issues I think too with that. You know, like one of the the um, challenging things is getting um, you know schools to actually prioritize school librarians, um, and it's I don't know what the the root cause is or how to like you know um, you know push up against that. But that's like a that's one of those BHAG goals, you know, that's just so large. So maybe like advocacy could be something um, that we could definitely use. Um, that's not something that's like a money money issue so much as it is just trying to get people to, you know, um, make it as an issue, like maybe like sacrificing some time to actually like create stuff to and show up at legislature stuff. But you know, like Kristen, she's in the middle of her busiest time in the library. Well, I mean, it's always a busy time, but, um, you know, definitely that part. Um, and purchasing and, I, yeah, and we just like, well, thank goodness for Alita because she's like, no, actually, we really can use some money. Um, by the way, <laughs> ignore what Kristen said about that. <laughs> but Alita, yeah, I agree. And actually, even to bring like, um, Todd Yamashita, who wrote Uncle's Magic Throne Net, like, how, how can we get him out to schools? He's on Kauai. It's actually super doable, right? Alita, is that some of the, some of the things you're thinking? I mean, we can do so much. We could do like, you know, like programs for Keiki, you know, like have, we could work, we could partner with the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, for example. You know, they have like artists in the schools. So we could get funding to provide funding for Todd Yamashita to go into the schools mm -hmm. or any anybody who is a creator and to get children to actually create their own. So, you know, like when my kids were in elementary school, they asked the parents to fund, um, you know, like a kind of like a like a yearbook kind of thing. Like you can print your own books on like um, Shutterfly. So they would get the students to write their own story, illustrate it and then whatever it was, and then have it printed on Shutterfly. And that kind of program would be very instrumental, I think, in terms of um, the second part of this program is um, exposing students, children, Keiki, to diverse viewpoints, as well as in empowering them. You can do this too, because that's something, you know, as we've noticed, like we, um, I like the graphic that Kristen had of, the, the mirrors that people see themselves. And if, you know, we're having a hard time finding that criteria about, okay, should it be from Hawaii, in Hawaii? Should it be a Hawaii publisher? You know, if we had like a, a large group of creators, that creates demand and, you know, this whole supply and demand part of it. So, you know, I, I kind of envision, you know, like um, programs like that in the schools, you know, I envision like, you know, the advocacy, the visibility for legislators, the Department of Education to, you know, make um, school librarians a priority because these are like the kind of developing years, you know, um, it's very important for them to see themselves in this world and then to become creators. Yeah, and that reminds me that one of our, you know, one of the things goes back to the presentation that Stephanie I, and I did with Dr. Sinclair, which is, you know, that we actually need to increase what's out there, and um, which is kind of the point of an award. But a, a lot of that, a lot of that is how how do we model for children in Hawaii that you can be here and be a book creator that you don't have to move to San Francisco um, in order to write a book or to illustrate a book, that you can imagine your future as a, as a literature creator as well as a literature consumer. Um, and really being able to see themselves in books is kind of the first step to that. Um, and so that is a, an, an element of what we're doing. I mean, I think about the fact that we just had Honestly, we booked, before I was the librarian here, we booked Meg Medina like before COVID and she got canceled. There'd be like no way we could get her now. <laughs> now that she's the national ambassador, and she's a Newberry Award winner. And, um, you know, but I'm, we partner with the Hello Hello Quiz Bowl um, and, you know, and they're wanting to get like Jerry Craft or someone next. And, I, and I'm like, we need to do this for our, our 
our own authors here in Hawaii. Like we need to, they're, they're pretty dang funny. They can come and relate to kids so well. And, um, you know, for us to really be putting some investments into, to those authors, I think is, a, is an important aspect. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jessica. I want to take a look at that. That's awesome. And there's so many people, honestly, um, who have incredible knowledge, like um, Kaui Young, who's in a, a, one of our advisory members, um, is a librarian in Kailua Kona, a children's librarian. And there's so much out there, you know, those of us who are on the committee, we're, we're just a lot, you know, we're, we're at the beginning of our library and information careers, really. For the most part so there's so much out there that other librarians have to offer the library is nice and quiet now so like <laughs> keep those keep those questions going yeah i can i can totally use my brain at the moment yes jessica hey um i'm so excited that you're having this session because um i really feel this is vital to the work that I hope to continue to do with um, yes. the book kits. If you check out the link, um, the Conscious Child uh, Family Book Discussion Kits, where the idea was generated in a uh, Ohio library. And I happened to see them on Web huh. Junction and use their their format. You know, they are they're offering that to any library that wants to duplicate it. But I had a difficult time finding books locally created that fit the criteria for what we were looking mm -hmm. for, for these kits. So I'm really yeah. excited to possibly work with you. I know human um, energy is limited and finite, <laughs> but um, oh, I'm work. so passionate about this that I think I would be interested in, in um, helping in some way, but um, <laughs> Go I just wanted to ask you, you know, because I've encountered this, even with these kits, this um, idea that, you know, it's some, I guess it's somewhat, it's complacency perhaps that because we live in a society that's uh, perceived as a melting pot and that we're diverse already, that, you know, there's no need for advocating for diversity and inclusivity, which I think is the exact opposite. Um, so I'm really, you know, and I just discovered Rudine Sims Bishop in my own research, the pandemic gave me this opportunity to really get passionate and focused on our profession and my personal values and mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors is so foundational to multicultural literature. And I'm just so excited to see that everywhere now, you know, and the publishing industry really uh, blossoming. So I guess, you know, in your paper, in your research, you know, is this addressed in terms of our culture in Hawaii? Because I know there's historically where, you know, uh, the ideas of white supremacy and racism seem to be disassociated or associated with over there, not here, but it, it is deeply ingrained in our history. So I guess my question is, you know, I'm looking for solidarity around this idea that we really need yeah. to get on board with diversity. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, okay. I'm not sure I can speak to my paper exactly because it was like a lot of semesters ago, <laughs> but um, I remember that Stephanie and I actually um, had a lot of trouble finding any, especially about Hawaii in particular. So those of you in graduate school, get right. And, um, so, you know, we had trouble with that, but I, there's something that Rudine Sims Bishop said that I, I think is, um, is, is central, um, uh, it, it, which is that the issue is that literature doesn't actually represent the real world, right? So it's not actually, it's fake news. Sorry to, to bring that, that, that comment up again, but, and, and, um, and then she, you know, when she's doing, when she's speaking, she talks about like, not only should children who are experiencing, um, identities that they're not seeing in literature, not only do they need it, but children who are 
are seeing themselves in literature. And she says that they get an inflated sense of self, which is no doubt true. But I think even more so, they get an unrealistic sense of the world that they live in. Therefore, in a lot of ways, they're not really prepared to be um, successful at the core of what success really means to be a productive and positive um, global community. If, if you are only seeing um, yourself and people like you, you're not really, you, if you get in a situation where you're dealing with a multicultural element, for instance, you're not really very prepared to handle it. Um, and, and often, well, I think that as, as human beasts, we are kind of hardwired for things that that doesn't make it very easy to be um, very culturally aware. Um, so it's such an opportunity for for books to present present those things. I've actually for my curriculum, so I I teach K five um, regularly, and then I get middle school once in a while. And for K five, I've actually structured my whole curriculum semester wise based on we start with mirrors you know where do you see yourself then we go to windows what else do you see and then you go to sliding glass doors was which is like how can what else you see make you a different person make you feel other things um maybe give you opportunities that you might not have considered before like and it's you know in kindergarten that's as simple as you're reading a book about somebody roller skating have you ever considered roller skating you know, wow. Um, and that's a window, right? So the, um, so I, I think that just, yeah, Rudine Sims Bishop's work is so powerful. It's one of those like, it's, it's poetic, right? It's just concentrated concept. So it is powerful. And I'd love to have you join us. You see Alita's like all her emojis are going off and she's clapping when you said that. <laughs> she's jumping up and down. <laughs> Because she's the one, she's my, she's, she's, she's like been the one hold, hold, holding up. No, holding I'm just a good a cheerleader. <laughs> that is so important. <laughs> well, I see this as an opportunity for solidarity too, because we're all tired and yeah. overworked perhaps and overcommitted, but essentially, you know, at the core, this is what feels like, um, not an absolute, but it's, it's just a core professional value. And I think I need constant reassurance that yes, this is what we're meant to do. And, and that's really, I think this group and this focus is really important. So thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. And yes, um, Andrew, I totally agree. Mira has, has been a huge support actually in that really like, um, kind of conceptual adolescence, you know, that painful time where like, were were the newbies people are like who are you who are you that you're emailing us about wanting to talk to so and so like who do you think you are and mira kind of she really paved the way for us to to um to you know listen even if they're newbies and they sound a little naive like give them a shot listen to them a little bit so her her support for us with hla and HASL and even with Maymay um, was really helpful, you know, especially people were like, excuse me, it's COVID, we're super busy. Uh, we appreciate you have a graduate project, but like we have real life going on. <laughs> so um, thank goodness. So uh, really appreciate having Mira in there who has a, a, like you're looking for Jessica, just a strong sense of those ideals and, and what it means to be part of children's literate lives. Um, so yes, thank you very much. And Mira does a ton of a ton of stuff in a lot of backgrounds. I don't know how she does it actually. I'm always seeing her name. <laughs> I was so I saw my name and then heard my name, and I was just thinking of raising my hand just to vocalize my support. Uh, apologies, I don't have my camera on today. I'm not not feeling super great, but I really want to camera ready. And support you. <laughs> It's been such a joy to work with you and in the, the beginning of the stages when things were the murkiest and um, you know I really resonate with what Jessica just said about finding solidarity because I knew that this needed to be done and everyone's kind of or I would say at that time I would have said oh everyone agrees it's just nobody has a vision or capacity right. and like you should do it you should go you know figure it out and talk to people and that's how change eventually happens is 
through the conversations and relationship building. So, I mean, all the work has been you, Alita, and your team. So it's been great yeah, to watch. Yeah. And you're right. It's that perseverance. Like, I think they're like, let's, let's see if they're still standing after COVID. Okay, let's see if they're still standing after the first round. Oh, they're still standing. All right. Well, how about this? And that, so therefore, I think stickers are in our future. Maybe even tattoos, I'm thinking. Um, but, you know, if anybody's like got, got some inside connections. because I, So I, I will say I do want to do a shout out to Nene. Um, Nene is a different thing. And, and I think a lot of us in, in education, I've been an educator for a very long time. Um, when we first hear about Nene, we think, oh, Nene, Hawaii books. And it's not, but it is the thing that it is, is it's a children's choice. So it's really recognizing and celebrating the choices that children are making and they're reading at a critical time. So that grade four to seven is the time when they found that reading starts to drop off. Um, a, a love of reading can start to drop off for a lot of kids. Um, and so I have to say Nene's been, been around for a very long time. They are solid and we have modeled almost everything off of their award program, except for our core concept. I am so grateful for all of the work that they've done in terms of their structure and uh, that we've been able to benefit from. It's really been wonderful. And so they do have a different purpose, which is to give kids a voice about what they'd love to read, um, but they're, they're not necessarily yet. I still have, you know, that original thing we went in with was we weren't gonna do our own award when Dr. Wertheimer asked us to get together in a group and, you know, get something done, we're like, okay, we're going to go to Nene and we're going to be like, okay, so this is us being naive, new library, you know, students. We're going we're gonna to go to Nene, which has been around for like 50 years. And we're going to say, hey, you need a Hawaii book category. Um, I still think it's a super good idea. I mean, they have a graphic novel categories. I just really think, um, but, but in all fairness to them, there's not, really much I mean you have Graham Salisbury there's not many books out there to like what what are you gonna you can't like have three Graham Salisbury books out there for, <laughs> to so he's gonna win every time um I know there's others but there's not much for grades four to seven so I I hope that that might still happen some days that we can get more authors but if we get kids seeing themselves in young literature and seeing themselves as readers and writers maybe they'll grow up and write some young literature that's my thought yeah Kristen I have a question you you uh, asked us to nominate books so where oh, yes right where do you find oh, the books I mean if books are who publishes these books and are they super limited print runs and they're only available in one bookstore or they're only sold online or how, where would we look for books? Um, well, I, this is a little bit cheating, but um, I went to Dipna Best Press and she's, she's amazing. She actually met up with me and what's incredible. I mean, she, she just knows a lot about books and she's pulling them from everywhere, from every publisher. She's not stuck on their, you know, what they sell or, um, so it's been a, a little bit challenging, but I did first go to one of we, one of the benefits of having a tourist economy is that when people come here, they want stuff related to Hawaii. And so you know, that um, that economic drive is really useful for us because they're going to find the books that relate to Hawaii. And then, um, so you you folks who are on Oahu have more, like you can walk into a bookstore. That That's a little bit more difficult over here. Um, but what I started with was local bookstores and local book publishers. Um, and it's interesting because when we were doing when, like Jessica was saying, you know, having trouble finding books, when we are doing the first round, you know, our public library system, wouldn't it be great if every library had those five, but it was only five books, right? And they're books that were pretty well known for the most part, but you couldn't go and borrow them from my Thelma Parker library. I mean, you could buy them within the system, but there weren't enough copies. Like, so it just feels like we need 
more more copies, but we do have great librarians. So going to your local public library, your children's librarians, are, is a great way to do it. Because they, which is why we suggested librarians be the nominators. Um, but yeah, I usually I've started with our local bookstores and book publishers, and looking at those. And parents, they're not allowed to nominate because we want to bring attention to the value, the cur curatable value. <laughs> of librarians, children's librarians, especially. I know when I get, when um, Dr. Wertheimer sends out all these, you know, job lists and stuff like that, I go down looking for like the school and children's library. You know, you hardly ever see, you might see youth librarians sometimes, but um, so that's where I would look. Yes, Best Press is amazing. Namea Hawaii, for sure. You know, all those are good ones. I, if you see a kid reading a book and loving it, and it's actually a, has children in it, that's probably your best, your best go-to. <laughs> Brad, does that answer your question, Glenn? Okay. But yes, I know everybody's busy, and and life being busy is a real thing. That it it it's 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 a real deal. So. No worries, Dr. Work. <laughs> I there's other places to look for. I don't they're not as they're not as common listings for sure. Any other last questions? Got seven minutes. Should we do you want to try nominating a book? That's what I think we should do. It's like go to the website, take a look at their criteria, see if you can nominate one book. If it doesn't meet the criteria perfectly, just go ahead and throw it in there, maybe make a note. Because maybe, you know, that's how our criteria has been changing as we're like, okay, we got to get real. And it's it's all those. I think we're now in our, as, a, as an award, we're maybe in our, like we're maybe age 27. We're just starting to leave idealism. Um, Dr. Wertheimer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't nominate a book, but I just wanted to say, you know, again, really thanks so much for all that you're doing. And I think this is a great example for like the, the advocacy that, that you're, everyone has talked about in terms of like how school librarians make a difference and, you know, and in terms of fueling what's published, what gets read, what gets celebrated and, you know, opening the windows and cracking mirrors and, you know, just, just uh, Ooh, making it. That's a new one. <laughs> There's a great book of poetry called Break the Mirror by uh, Sasaki. But um, in any case, um, just just really wanted to say again, you know, really thanks. Thanks so much and for, for sharing everything today. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reimer. Thanks for being the beginning of this. You three. Mira and Gwen and Andrew. <laughs> Alita, is there anything we've missed? I, I think that you got it all covered. Um, all right. Yeah. So if you come, do come to a meeting. We're not like, you know, we're not, we don't have Robert's rules of orders down or anything. <laughs> we're just kind of there pulling things together, moving forward. And, you know, I think a lot of times it's a tricky thing about being a new group is, or, and a new award is we're not established. So I think that there's some people who want to join a committee when they can come in and like, there's the minutes and they know exactly what's the next step and what's going to happen. And okay, we have two and a half minutes next on the agenda. Um, but we're a little messy. Um, but I think it's doable. Even even being even being at a messy stage, I think it's doable. Well, we're closing in on the uh, the end of the hour. I just wanted to uh, mention again that this session was recorded. It will be posted on the HLA YouTube channel. So if you um, know of people who would enjoy watching it, um, we'll be sending out the link to that later. Um, are there any final questions for Kristen or comments? Hearing none, then I think we're ready to say mahalo, Kristen, and mahalo to everybody for attending today. Thank you so much for being engaged and uh, having a wonderful discussion. So thank you, and we'll see you again next time. Mahalo. Thank you all mahalo. for coming.